Dear students, welcome to this class of Principles of Macroeconomics. I am your teacher, Muhammad Nadeem Sarwar. Today, we shall discuss the long run and short run equilibrium in the economy with the help of aggregate demand and aggregate supply curves. We shall first compare the ISLM model with aggregate demand and aggregate supply model. Then we shall discuss the short run and long run equilibrium in the economy. At the end, we shall study the difference between classical and Keynesian thoughts about equilibrium in the economy and business cycle. So let's start with the lecture. Students, in ISLM model, we studied that a stimulus through increase in money supply or increase in government expenditures or decrease in taxes results in rising real GDP. However, the price level is assumed to remain fixed. Whereas in aggregate demand, aggregate supply model, the result of a monetary or fiscal expansion is that both the output and price level rise in short run, while in long run only the price level increases but output level comes back to its initial level, that is at natural level or potential level. We shall study this in this lecture. Students, it is appropriate to revise the concepts of short and long run from macroeconomic point of view. In macroeconomics, the short run refers to a time period within a business cycle. That is a time period within which a business cycle has not completed all its four phases. This is shown in the diagram. In short run, the monetary wages and expected price level have not adjusted fully to changes in actual price level. In diagrammatic view, the short run equilibrium shows an output price level combination where aggregate demand is equal to short run aggregate supply. Whereas long run refers to a time period beyond a business cycle. That is a time period in which a business cycle has passed its all four phases. This is shown in the diagram. In long run, the monetary wages and expected price level have adjusted fully to changes in actual price level. In graphical presentation, the long run equilibrium shows an output price level combination where aggregate demand is equal to short run aggregate supply which is equal to long run aggregate supply. However, for simplicity, we can say that if aggregate demand is equal to long run aggregate supply, that is long run equilibrium. Now let's view the effect of demand shock on output level in short and long run with the help of graph. Here the initial equilibrium is at E0 where aggregate demand not AD0 is equal to SAS0 which is equal to LAS. According to the conditions told earlier, this point represents long run equilibrium. 
now due to an external monetary or fiscal shock aggregate demand shifts to right as ad1 this creates a shortage in the economy as at price level p0 the level of output produced as shown by aggregate supply curve is less than the level of output demanded by the economy as shown by ad1 this gap is equal to e not a therefore the price level increase and we move along with ad1 and sas to point b which is the new equilibrium according to the conditions stated this is short run equilibrium because the price level has increased from p not to p b but the monetary wage rate is same as it was at previous prices that is monetary wages are w not so taking advantage of higher prices and lower rate lower real wages the firms hire more laborers and produce higher output level because of increase in price level the real wage decreases this results in higher demand for wages from the workers so monetary wage rate adjust to w1 as a result short run aggregate supply curve shifts to sas1 and short run equilibrium shifts to point c at point c the output level is still higher from potential level of output but it is lower than as it was at point p because of increase in cost of production the price level also increases to pc this process continues until full adjustment of wages at w prime where equilibrium is at e prime the price level is p prime and output level is back to its natural or potential level the gaps between natural level of output and actual output results in creating business cycle which can be interpreted as a result of asymmetry between prices and wages and the rigidity of prices and wages both the asymmetry between prices and wages is because in short run the prices are flexible while the nominal wage rate is fixed short run fixity of nominal wages together with flexibility of price level implies a counter cycle movement in real wages by counter cycle movement we mean the movement of a variable in direction opposite to the movement in real gdp for example when real gdp increases the unemployment level decreases next is the rigidity of both prices and wages both prices and wages are fixed in short run and that the short run aggregate supply curve is relatively flat when real gdp rises above natural real gdp there develops an inflationary pressure that causes both prices and wages to rise until the economy returns to a point along long run aggregate supply curve however these adjustments may take considerable period of time which creates 
बिजनेस साइकिल नाउ लेट्स स्टडी दिस इमेंट शॉक एंड बिजनेस साइकिल फिनोमिना अकॉर्डिंग टू टू प्रोमिनेंट मैक्रो इकोनॉमिक थॉट्स फर्स्ट द क्लासिकल्स एंड देन द केन्जियंस स्टूडेंट्स इन क्लासिकल थॉट्स क्वान्टिटी थीरी ऑफ मनी होल्ड सेंट्रल पोजिशन द क्यू टी एम स्टेट्स दैट एम वी इज इक्वल टू पी वाई वेयर एम इज मनी सप्लाई वी इज द विलासिटी पी इज द प्राइस लेवल एंड वाई इज द रियल आउटपुट लेवल द विलासिटी इज रिकॉर्डेड एज बींग रिलेटिवली स्टेबल and primarily determined by the changes in payment methods that gradually evolved over time any monetary policy change causes one on one change in price level this adjustment takes place in short period of time which is ignorable let's see this in diagram here the economy is in equilibrium at point a where price level is p1 now because of increase in money supply aggregate demand curve shifts due to increase in aggregate demand a temporary shortage pushes the prices to p2 and economy gets back into equilibrium at point b the classicals believe that demand shock in the economy would not evolve would not involve any significant movement of real gdp away from natural real gdp therefore no business cycle in real gdp would occur over shorter periods the business cycle in prices were attributed mainly to changes in money supply However we know that the great depression of 1930s shattered classical school of thought as economy went into deep recession and big questions rose on automatic adjustment system of the economy as propagated by classicals James Keynes explained this phenomena from both demand and supply sides according to him the self adjusting mechanism may fail because of monetary impotency which is a demand side problem or because of wage rigidity which is a supply side issue monetary policy can be ineffective if is curve is vertical or lm curve is horizontal in both cases the increase in money supply does not change the output level of the economy while the wage rigidity can be because of unions or wage contracts or because of market constraints as adjusting wages on daily or weekly basis is not possible both of these reasons do not let economy to adjust to long run equilibrium quickly so adjustment takes considerable time period which we cannot ignore the case of extreme wage rigidity can be seen in following diagram the decline in planned spending shifts the aggregate demand curve leftward as a result the economy moves from point e0 to e1 here the short run aggregate supply curve is fixed in position by the assumption of fully reached nominal wages this wage rigidity does not let economy to move back to initial level in such situation the government intervention is needed to restore the output at its potential level 
that is all for this lecture please post your questions and give your feedback in comments also consider subscribing the channel liking and sharing the video thank you and